Hi, my name is Candace Moraga. Uh, I'm doing an experiment on Le Chatelier's principle. You'll have to excuse the lack of lighting, so I've got sort of a flashlight going on. Um, and I'm going to be switching back and forth to show you what I did and explain some of my results. Uh, basically, I've set up some different wells of solutions whereby, if I can show you here, I had to put it on a piece of white paper so you could really see the colors because the countertop is black here. But I mixed uh, a magnesium chloride with phenol phthalene. Um, the first reaction that I had observed was this formula here, as we can see. I'm trying to get to focus correctly. Um, basically, um, what we're going to be illustrating is um, if we have an increase in the hydroxide ions there, okay, then uh, basically what happens is that as the increase of the product, it will turn a pink color, more basic. Because when we have the magnesium chloride, which we added phenolphthalein to, we can see here, I had a First, I started off with the magnesium chloride, and I added the phenolphthalein. Basically, what that is, is that's a pH indicator. Um, when you have the phenolphthalein in a product, the more basic it is, the more pink it turns. Um, and a, a, a solution becomes more basic as it's... Uh, hydroxide ions increases uh, to its share of hydrogen ions. Um, it's basically pH is a, a balance of the water uh, in essence. So when there's more hydroxide, it becomes more basic. When there's less hydroxide, it becomes more acidic. So we can use this uh, color indicator to see some of the uh, shifts in equilibrium in the reaction. Uh, so when the hydroxide, which is a product in this reaction that we're going to be that I observed here, um, increases, then the equilibrium will shift back over to the left to compensate for this increase in the hydroxide product. Now, when I added a, a, a so let's see on this one, I have all these different vials here. When I added a sodium Let's see, where did I put it? Here it is. I added the sodium hydroxide in the first well there. Um, it ended up uh, shifting the uh, equilibrium uh, left. Uh, that basically ended up with a forward reaction, uh, basically because it broke the uh, sodium into uh, the sodium hydroxide into sodium ions and hydroxide ions, increasing the product, the hydroxide. Um, and actually, um, that wasn't the first well. Oh my shine. It's wow, the colors look so different on this. Um, in comparison. This is uh, after I did the experiment. I had some better ones before, but my batteries had sort of died. Um, but, gosh, it looks purple on this video, but it's, it's, actually, it's actually a really awesome magenta. Um, this is just an example of how the, the camera doesn't see as well as the eyeball. Um, when I added the hydrochloric acid, um, it turned back to a milky white color and uh, the reaction had reversed due to the equilibrium shifting to the right again um, and that's because the color changed back um, because the the hydroxide ion were consumed and decreased so um, it ended up increasing uh, the reactant side instead of the product side. The product side decreased um, I had also done a well where I added the, this Na2EDTA uh, to the uh, solution here. And it looks like, I've got a little diagram here, uh, the formula, because it's hard to see on that pipette of Na2EDTA, is C10H14N2O8Na2 with 2H2O. 
So basically, the effect of EDTA is um, to bind metal cations, in this case, the magnesium there. Um, so the magnesium would end up decreasing. However, the hydroxide is also being added. So it's sort of confusing because it has a counteracting effect, but what happened was it turned milky. So, um, like in our previous reaction, the overall concentration of the product, uh, the hydroxide, must be decreasing because of the pH reaction we're seeing. Would re it's a reaction is reversing, just like in the last one. Um, I'm trying to show there, my corners uh, a little folded there. The equilibrium had shifted to the right. Then when I heated it in little uh, pipettes, I had um, these little pipettes and little beakers over here, which I had some crushed ice set up and some hot tap water. I ended up having to prop it up against this hammer here um, because the spoons that I attached to it with these um, little rubber bands kept uh, knocking over and I was spilling water all over my counter. I must have done that I don't know how many times. It was quite the miss. Uh, very time consuming and all that. But um, basically what ended up happening was um, uh, when I heated it up, uh, then it ended up uh, proving that it was an exothermic reaction uh, because it became uh, more milky, decreasing the product. Um, so in an exothermic reaction, heat is treated as a product so it does not not take in heat to move forward so heating or giving heat would reverse the reaction uh, shifting the equilibrium right as uh, shown. Then uh, I did another little reactions uh, uh, and I'm about to do the similar thing. I have to go grab more ice. Um, and now I've got a method down for my pipettes. But what I had done was I had it mixed up, let's see here, is sodium bisulfate. And I had mixed that with thymol blue. Now thymol blue is a, another type of a pH indicator. Um, as I've shown here, the reaction that we're, we observed on that. Um, and in the product side, we see hydronium instead of the hydroxide. Thymol blue, it shows um, different shifts in pH because um, when it becomes, the pH is more acidic, hydronium increases. Um, so thymol blue uh, pH starts to shift from a red to a yellow from a pH of 1.2 to 2.8 and uh, shifts from a yellow to a blue from a pH of 8.0 to 9.6, um, more on the basic end. The thymol blue seems like a misnomer because in the solutions, uh, once again, don't look too good on the camera here, there's a sort of a yellowish orange. So, um, when I started off with the sodium bisulfate, um, I ended up uh, adding the thymol blue and it turned it pink. So all the wells that I did that to at the top five all turned pink. Um, and then I added a sodium sulfate, which is extremely acidic. Um, and it went back, that was on the first one, it went back to yellow uh, because the sodium sulfate breaks into the sodium and the uh, um, SO4 there. Uh, the, the little sulfate ions. Um, and uh, so that increased the product, shifting the equilibrium to the left. Now in the second one, not the second one actually, it was, yeah, the third one, I had added these sodium bisulfate crystals. Um, and that changed the color back in the other direction, as you see there. So it reversed it towards the reactant side um, as far as the reaction. And then the equilibrium has shifted to the right because it broke it down um, into sodium and into the HSO4 because the sodium bisulfate here, as you can see, uh, formula is Na. HSO4. So that is actually 
on the reactant side. And that's why it changed the color than the other side. I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, other solutions into pipettes and heat it up to determine if it's exothermic or endothermic, much in the same way I did for the original solutions. I had actually uh, tested some of them over again uh, before just to make sure I was doing it right um, and getting the same type of reactions. I'll go ahead and type all this up into a cohesive report and uh, I hope you understood this. Peace out.